Hello, doctors and practitioners. This is Dr. John Brimhall, and I have with me as a special guest today, Dr. Randy Rinklib. Uh, Dr. Randy is one of the developers of the 18-watt laser. It is the most powerful cold laser in the world, as near as we know. We don't know of any other out there. And the, the fun part about this thing is you can do in one second what you can't do in a week with many of the other lasers out there. So rather than belabor the point, uh, those of you who know I am, I'm author of the book, The Six Steps to Wellness, Solving the Health Puzzle with The Six Steps to Wellness, and uh, had a lot to do with bringing laser to the chiropractic world and assisted in, in what we see out there in the chiropractic manifestations of, of lasers, different types of lasers. And this is the one that is my go-to laser every day, all the time when I'm treating with patients. So Dr. Randy Reeklib, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Bremhall, for that for inviting me and, and thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, I've been using lasers since the mid 80s. I started off using a five milliwatt laser and over the years I've used hot lasers, cold lasers and with mixed results. And over the years I've also learned why I was getting mixed results and I'm here to share that information with you, so hopefully you can get better results with your current lasers and share information on the new lasers that are available to you. So the first question I ask everybody is, what do you want to do with a laser? And the most common question that I get from people is, is uh, what are the treatment times? Um, for the lasers that I have and for the lasers that they're using. The goal is to get four joules per centimeter squared to whatever tissue that is being treated. The most common problems with light therapy are under and over treatment, not enough joules or too many joules. Light energy is expressed in joules and what joules are is one watt of power times one second equals one joule. So let's look at some of these different lasers that are available and what kind of joules they're producing. So if you have a two watt laser or a 2000 milliwatt laser for 60 seconds, you're putting out 120 joules. And that is what is getting to the skin. And if you have a 1.5 watt laser or a 1,500 milliwatt laser, you're looking at 90 joules in one minute. So our 18.1 watt laser, you're getting 1,086 joules in one minute to the skin. Now let's drop down down here to the to the bottom one five milliwatts. That's the first laser that I had, and a lot of you out there are still using five milliwatt lasers. So if you run a five milliwatt laser for one minute, you're getting 0.3 joules of energy in 60 seconds. That's not very much. What's in, um, this, these measurements are done with continuous wave lasers. So that if, you're, if you're running a pulse laser or a super pulse lasers, these numbers don't work anymore. For example, a 100 watt super pulse laser um, is only putting out 200 milli milliwatts of power. So um, you're not, it wouldn't be like 100, um, it wouldn't be 100 joules for, it wouldn't be 100 joules per uh, second. It would be, um, less than a joule or basically one fifth of a joule per second. So energy density is expressed in joules per centimeter squared. This is the total energy divided by the probe size. So looking at these focal, uh, the spot size is expressed in centimeter squared. So if you have um, a large focal spot, um, you have a low power density.
density and less heat. Any any laser, if you if you bring this the spot size down to a small enough size, it will become hot. So all of our lasers come out at a, around a 30 degree angle. That causes um, them to be cooler and be safer. So if you get five feet away from them, they're very safe. So we're going to look at two one and a half watt probes with different tips on them. One has a big tip on it, one has a small tip on it. So the spot size on the small tip, AccuTip, is less than a centimeter squared. So the power density of it is actually 5.75 watts per centimeter squared, even though it's a one and a half watt laser. So that's going to be, that's going to be pretty warm compared to the same power with a, with a spot size of 1.76 centimeters squared, the power density is less than a half a watt. So that's going to be a lot cooler. So these both these lasers have much different uses. So let's look at these two lasers and what's happening at the scan and what's happening deep. So at the scan with the AccuTip laser, you're getting the goal here is to get four joules per centimeter squared at whatever it is you're trying to treat. So if you're trying to treat skin, you want four joules per centimeter squared to the skin. If you want to um, treat a disc, you want four joules per centimeter squared at the disc. So it takes 0.7 of a second to get four joules per centimeter squared at the skin, and it takes eight minutes to get four joules per centimeter squared at the disc. So with the bigger tip, you're talking 4.7 seconds to get four joules per centimeter squared at the scan, but it's the same amount of time to get four joules per centimeter squared at the disc. And the reason for that is is the absorption of the energy. So with your laser, the important thing to think about is what is it that you're treating. So if you have a one watt laser with a small focal point or a large focal point, you, you, it's going to be a big difference at skin level, but it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same thing at the disc. So let's move on and, and look at a little bit more about what's going on. So or, ordinary uh, white light is multiple wavelengths of light mixed together. Not, it's not coherent. Laser light is coherent. All the waves are in phase. It holds together. <clears throat> LED light is out of phase, but it's monochromatic, meaning that they're one color. So in, in tissue, coherence is maintained. So laser at depth is still the coherent light getting to the deep tissue, but collimation is lost. Okay, so that's why um, a small focal point and a large spot size will get you the same joules per centimeter squared deep. But there's other things to consider. So let's look at some of the other things. Okay, the, what determines the depth of penetration is wavelength. So wavelength determines the color of the light. And that's just, and that's uh, measured in nanometers. So, if we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, 630 to 900 nanometers is the optical window. What that means is that is the wavelengths that the body can absorb energy-wise. So anything outside of 630 is not going to absorb very good, and anything above 900 nanometers is not going to absorb very well. Okay, so back to the question, what do you want to do with a laser? All right, this slide right here is a study done by our government on spinal cord injuries, and this has helped me understand what's going on with light probably more than any other study that's out there. So this shows the, the wavelengths of light and what is, uh, is being absorbed in different tissues. So this line right here, 
is the spinal cord. And this line right here is skin. So here is the 630 nanometers. And you notice that right here is where it starts to absorb, you get good absorption with the skin. And it, everything, you're going to get good absorption with skin throughout, even beyond the optical window. OK? So at 8.08 or 8.10 is you, is you get a peak of absorption. So what's been very interesting to me is why some lasers are hot and some are not. Um, I always thought that infrared was hotter than red. And in, some, in most cases, it is, but not in all cases. So what we discovered when, when we added some 850 um, nanometer light to our, our body light paddles, which are LED paddles, we went from red to infrared, I thought that they would run a lot hotter. But in reality, they ran a lot cooler because the body is able to absorb this frequency of light. But if you get out here into beyond 900, where there's a lot of lasers that are running in the 940 to 980 80 range, that they are hotter than, than the red because that the skin is, able, is absorbing more of that energy. So what, what have we found is that if you take a 980 laser that has one watt of power with a, focal, with a focal spot of, let's say, one centimeter squared, and you have a 8, 10 nanometer laser with the same power density, the 8, 10 laser will be 60% cooler than the 980. And the reason for that is the body is able to absorb that energy. It penetrates deeper. Randy, not only not the fact it goes deeper, you're getting to the tissue for greater healing. So the 800 frequency is going to be less hot and go way deeper, clear yes. the spinal cord, versus the other is going to get hot and not go past the skin. Am I understanding that correctly? That's correct. So, so if you look at if you look over here towards the ends of this spectrum, the if you look okay at the very beginning, like the 630s and stuff, the lasers that are red. It's like you're going to get a lot of more absorption at the skin level. So those lasers are really good for, for skin. In fact, that's why our new lasers, we've added 100 milliwatts of red because that energy is being absorbed superficially. So it's really good for skin conditions and, and acupuncture um, points and things that are superficial. But if you look down here under... You know, if you look under spinal cord and you look connective tissue and muscle and all that, there's hardly any absorption. Most of that energy is being absorbed up here. Until you get up to about the 700 nanometer range, it's like you're not, you're, at that point you're getting about equal um, absorption in the skin and then those other tissues, you're getting better penetration. But you're still not getting it to the spinal cord until, until you get over here into like the... 780 to the 850 range, and then that's where you're getting good results with spinal cord. So if you have a laser that's in the right, wrong nanometer range, you can get really good results superficially, but you're not going to get very good results, you know, for deep tissues. Um, and the same thing when you get in, when you when you get over here past the 900. It's like, again, the, you're getting more absorption, you're getting more heat, and you're getting less absorption over here for the spinal cord. You're getting most of it at the skin. So these lasers, so this is part of the problem with some of these hot lasers. They feel really good. They're getting really warm at the skin level. You're having really long treatment times to get any jewels to the disc. Because, and so you're cooking superficial tissue before you can get enough jewels to what you're trying to treat. So when I've been using some hot, some of the hot lasers in my career, a lot of times, um, like for shoulder things, 
I would end up flaring them up and not getting very good results for the deep injuries. They worked really good for the superficial things, smaller joints, but they were not very good for some of the deep tissues. So let's let's get into a little bit more about why that is. So so when you when you shine a laser into the body, some of the the photons are being reflected, some of them are being absorbed. Those are the ones that are creating the physiological effect. Some of them are passing through to the tissues below, and then some of them are scattering. And the scattering is why it's you're getting the similar results with a small focal point and a big focal point for deep tissue. So let's so it's passing through the different layers of tissue, and different things are happening. So some of it is reflecting off. Some of it is scattering. Some of it is absorbing, and then some of it is passing through. And so this is the combination of, of everything. So, so let's look at some of the factors here. So, so back from that uh, chart before, we know that anything from 780 to about 850 penetrates really deep. So it's, this research shows that it's about two and a half times as deep as something in the red the visual range. So the next part of that is if you t do compression, you push the laser into the body, you can get up to 53% deeper penetration. That's huge. So if you have a hot laser, you can't push it into the body because you'll burn somebody. So you've, you've already, even if you have the right wavelength, the deepest penetrating is with a, if you turned it down so it was cold, you could get 53% better penetration. So then th this is, um, I thought this was interesting. If you lift the laser off the body by two millimeters distance away, which is not very much, you're going to lose 22% of the emission. So if you think about it, if you take a little pin light flashlight and it's completely dark and you shine it on your hand, it's like it lights up the room and you can see, you can see if you push it into your hand, it, it, it makes your hand glow red but it doesn't light up the room. So there's a huge, you're losing a huge amount of energy through the scatter rate, I mean, through bouncing off. So the bigger hey, Randy, the body, the let less. Me, let me summarize here a minute for some of us that might be a little bit slow here because we all were raised in the low dosages amount and maybe even a, a line or a broad circle where you could sweep the whole area at one time. So what this research shows is if you're touching the skin, it goes much deeper. If it's the right wavelength, it goes deeper. So if you're in the red, you get maybe acupuncture changes, lymphatic changes, muscle changes, but you don't actually get healing to the spinal cord or maybe even nerve root because it stops itself at the skin. Now, the way since I use the laser we're talking about here, the lens on the outside is actually bulges to the outside or convex. So I can press it right against the skin and get that 53% deeper penetration, even though it's already going all the way to the spinal cord because it's in that 800 range versus red, or it's not in the 900 range where I'd lose that. So I'm getting more penetration because I'm at the right wavelength. It's cold so I can put it on the skin. So now I'm going all the way to the spinal cord with up to 53% deeper penetration, right wavelength, cold laser, versus wrong wavelength for deep penetration. And the, the, the red is definitely great for the skin and acupuncture, but for spinal cord healing, as a chiropractor above, down, inside, out, we want to communicate with the brain and the spinal cord, not just at the nerve root area. And the nerve root is even deeper than skin. So, wow, we've, we've just increased our effectiveness here. I didn't even know how to measure, by 100%, 500%? Yes, exactly. And it is so, so you paid for this powerful 60 watt hot laser that you've turned down to 10 watts that's still hot, and you're still only getting 50 percent, you know, you're getting 50 percent less penetration with it. So basically, now you're down to a five watt laser. It's, it's like you can't use, you, you can't use the power. I mean, you can't get it into the body. Because it's your it's, it's for all these reasons. 
the another interesting thing is lasers and LEDs of optimal wavelength penetrate up to 23 centimeters. There's four studies that show that. I mean, so basically, if you have a powerful LED system, you can get better results than you can with a low-powered laser system, even though coherent light is better, wavelength is more important for penetration. So let's look at some, look, let's get further into to what's happening there. So you, you have this light, you're shining it on there, you're getting remittance, you're getting reflection and backscattered. So that is, that's energy that is not going into the body to help with the physiological effects. So all these low powered lasers that you're using that don't have enough, you know, joules per centimeter squared, you know, to, you know, you have very long treatment times with to begin with, you're even losing more because of remittance. So non-contact with the skin, you get certain penetration. Contact with the skin, you get deeper penetration. But if you can put pressure onto the skin, you get 50% more penetration. So is there any other laser out there that has that convex lens besides yours? Or is that strictly uh, unique uh, um, to There's a number of lasers that have the convex lens, but, but it comes down to the size of their focal spot. And, and then the wavelength, I mean, I, I, I guess a lot of these places just don't understand the penetration or maybe they they like the heat, I don't know, but the research out there is, and my, my own experience with it is showing that, you know, you're gonna have a lot longer treatment times with those other wavelengths to get results. I mean, most of the hot lasers out there, you're talking five to 10 minute treatment times. And in, in my opinion, looking at joules per centimeter squared, you're cooking superficial tissue um, to get enough joules deep. So my experience with them hasn't been great. And, and so you know, I've gone away from the hot lasers. So this shows, so we were talking about pressure getting better penetration, but if it's hot, you aren't getting better penetration. Because what's, you're heating you're heating the tissue underneath, you're increasing um, blood per perfusion, and you're, not, you're losing penetration because of the heat. Even with, even with the cold lasers, if you run it over a tattoo, it's like that energy will reflect that light back and you need to move that laser back and forth over that tissue so it can dissipate that energy or lift it off and get less penetration or turn the heat or turn the power down on it because you are going to get reflected energy remittance from the the tattoo or what I like to do is when I do it over like the occiput with his hair is I, I, I push it in but I move it back and forth because the hair converts that 808 energy into heat because it can't absorb it. So that's the problem with 808 is you can run 60% more power with the same focal spot, but if you have something that absorbs, that converts that light energy to heat, things get hot, go from cold to hot very quickly. And so you just need to be aware of that. And that's why you don't want to go through any material or you know, if something's too hairy. So um, the, the temperature that you need to kill toenail fungus is 120 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have a hot laser, you, I mean, you could do, you're doing cell damage. So, so again, what is it that you want to do with your laser? If you want, if you want to kill toenail fungus, then I recommend getting a laser that isn't 808 because even the AccuTip laser that has enough power density underneath it to um, what they consider the right power density for fungus, because it's 808, it absorbs too well and it doesn't produce enough heat. Where, so I recommend something outside the optical window that doesn't penetrate as deep and, and that, um, 
you know, that doesn't penetrate as deep and is all absorbed superficially and creates heat to kill the toenail fungus. When they're using um, lasers for tattoo removal, they use um, lasers that are in the 1,040 nanometer range, which is outside the optical window. And what that do does is it, in a layer of cells, it produces so much heat that it vaporizes the layers of cells and doesn't damage the tissue below it. And then they use um, they use the light wavelength of 500, and about around 550 nanometer wavelength um, for different color inks that penetrates different levels and does the same thing, vaporizes the layer of cells without damage the, the cells above or below. So I, I find that very interesting with, the, with different wavelengths, what you can do. But those aren't gonna help, those wavelengths are not gonna help you do musculoskeletal because you don't get any penetration. So the, the hotter the laser, the higher the inhibition. Higher doses, so 16 joules per centimeter squared or, or above, uh, have an inhibitory effect and more tissue and cell damage. Okay, this is a study done in laser surgery. So if you go, so the goal again is is four joules per centimeter squared or whatever le le level of tissue you're trying to treat. So basically what they're saying is from three to 10 joules per centimeter squared in animal studies was best for collagen and you know with lower densities. Cooler is better than hot, all right? So hot lasers kill toenail fungus, so they're good for that. And, that, and this is, um, like I said, it's the same density that we have underneath the AccuTip laser, but because we're in 808, it, it's cool. It's 60% cooler, and we aren't seeing those effects. We're not getting very good results with killing things. So, the hottest doses group significantly increase tumor volume, blood vessels, and cell abnormalities. So, you're doing DNA damage if you're running too hot. Okay, so it's just the the baked chicken principle. You know, 60 minutes, 300 degrees, yum. 15 minutes, 1,200 degrees, you're talking charcoal. So, again, so the best thing to for treatment um, is total joules is the best estimate for therapeutic effect. All right. So again, back to again, four joules per centimeter squared. How long does it take to get that? All right, again, what I was saying out here, 550, really good for surgical lasers. It's like you don't get very good skin absorption. You're, you're vaporizing cells. Out here, you're vaporizing cells. Out here, hot lasers, right in all on this, uh, hot lasers. In this, this area right here is the super pulse. And the problem with super pulse is is they're off more than they're on. So you have a 100 watt super pulse is putting out 200 milliwatts of energy. Um, most super watts are 25 and 50 um, watt lasers. The problem is they're only putting out 60 to 120 milliwatts of energy. So you have better penetration than you do with the, the reds over here, but but it just takes too too long to treat something, and you and we'll get into that in, here in a little bit. Okay, Arndt Schultz principle: energy must be absorbed by the tissue significant to stimulate a physiological response. Weak stimuli elicit strong reactions. Very strong stimuli inhibit systems. So too little stimulus, no effect. Too much stimulus, injury. All right, so. The, the problem with lasers is that a little bit is good, a lot is not necessarily better, and it's accumulative. So, like four joules per centimeter square, sweet spot, three to 10 joules is good. But it drops off pretty quick in different people, it drops off at different, different, different energy. So some people at four joules per centimeter squared, you know, you, you might flare them up a little bit, even, without doing any damage, but you might create some problems. 
but with these big high power lasers, it's like it's real easy to cross this invisible line and get either no response or negative response. And I know that Dr. John has is uh probably crossed that line a time or two, just like I have, everybody has. Um I was treating a, a tennis elbow and I was treating it every day for two minutes with a six watt laser and first week is getting better and better and better and then and uh, then after that I was getting any response at all. So I got ninety percent better after a week and then after that it just didn't help anymore. I took two weeks off, came back and hit it again two minutes and it cleared it all out. So what had happened it was on is, yourself, wasn't it, Randy? You're talking about treating yourself, right? Yes. And because that's the problem is like like we have access to it, so we're hitting it every day where our patients are only having access to it every couple of days. So, so like a, so that's what I was saying. It is a cumulative. So like the dose that you need today, like four joules per centimeter squared might be good today. Three might be good tomorrow. Two might be good the day after that. If you keep going with that four, that four joules every day, it could, you could get to a point where you're just not getting results anymore. Or actually putting too much in the tissues. Let me, before you move this slide, let me explain to doctors how I found the most effective way to evaluate this. For those of you who do muscle testing at all, and let's say you're you're testing a shoulder and uh, you test a muscle that's strong, but then you touch your hand or the patient's hand on that shoulder where the pain is or where you find a problem, the muscle will go weak. So we laser into the area we want the laser to make an effect until the muscle goes strong when you test it with therapy localization. If you stay there too long, it will go weak. So if you're not testing that, you really don't know how long to hold it. Let me say it again. I'm testing a muscle that's strong, let's say an arm muscle. I'm touching my hand to the patient's hand on their shoulder joint, and it goes weak. I laser into that shoulder joint until that weak muscle goes strong. Now, then you can back off. You know you've done a good job. If you stay there, it just uh, maybe a second or two or three seconds longer until it goes totally weak and back off, then you've, got, you've maxed out your performance. And you will find out, like Dr. Randy's saying, if you don't measure that some way and say it takes four seconds, and we're with this laser, we're talking about seconds of treatment, not minutes, not hours, not days. And now in the old days, I used to have a stand that I laid my laser in and let it laser the patient for five or 10 or 15 minutes because we're using such low dosages. And it didn't penetrate past the skin since I was using only red. Now that we have both red, but we have the infrared at 18 watts, one second for one watt is one joule. So I'm getting 18 joules a second to the tissues I wanted to. You don't stay there very long. So you shine it on there, a weak muscle goes strong. I hold it there one second, two second, three second, and it goes weak, I back off. Now I've known I've got it where I want it to go. I know I've got it to maximum penetration. I know I got out before it caused any damage. So use that in your repertoire and you'll be fine. I've used that on a kidney and done exactly what you said. And the first time I treated him, it was about two minutes, maybe a little bit over two minutes in the front with a 6.1 watt and about two minutes in the back um, before they tested strong. I did him the next day. It was probably about a minute and a half in the front and back before they te tested strong. And then the following day, it was probably a total of two minute treatment time for, for the front and back. So the dose, I mean, it was, it re really was surprising how much less energy they needed to get the results each day. It's like, it's, I kind of um, use the analogy of like a, charging a battery. Once you've charged that battery up, it doesn't take much to bring it back up once it's a little low. But the first time you got to, you know, run it for quite a while to get it charged. Great analogy. Okay, so here's the problem with cold, low-powered lasers. You've got long treatment times, so they're hard to make pay. Patients unsure of the effect. Like 5 milliwatt lasers take 13 minutes and 20 seconds to get 4 joules per centimeter squared to the skin. All right, so... If you treat anything deeper than that, you're talking longer treatment times. So if you're painting a large area, that's 
I mean, that's one centimeter squared. That's to get that. So if you're treating a large area, I mean, these things are really good for reflexology type things, balancing energy of the body. But for physiological results, that's why you're going to see such mixed results with, with these kind of lasers. And in the patients, you're going to see miracles with any laser, but you're also not going to consistently get them either. So, so what can you do what with lasers? We have what you talked about earlier, since the red spectrum never makes it to the spinal cord or maybe to the nerve root, then you're never going to get the kind of healing you get being able to get that right amount of joules to the tissue all the way to that area. And that's what I found and why I went to using your laser. Not that I don't use a red one, but I will use that for quick and easy in skin. But when I want to get deep and get nerve root or brain stem or deeper spinal cord, I've got to stay with, with the infrared for the exact specified amount of time. Yeah, like if you want to do treat neuropathy or something like that with, with a low-powered red laser, you just can't do it. You just don't, there's just not enough. If you want to do organ work, brain or whatever, brain, there, you just can't get enough joules where you need them. So th these are some things that you can do with lasers. You can kill viruses. You can do laser injection, meaning you can sink a laser in, into tissue and, and get deep tissue. Um, you can do re uh, reduce inflammation, uh, brain function, uh, just fine with lasers, tinnitus, uh, reduce and, and eliminate pain, uh, tissue regeneration. Uh, laser prolotherapy. Now that's something that you can only do with a powerful laser. So what you're doing with prolotherapy is you're trying to cause inflammation of the of the ligament so it regenerates. So with on Schultz, it's like a little's good, a lot's not better. Is lots not better. So so if you ran like a six watt. Or, or let's say you run 18 watt and you run it for like 30 seconds on a spot, it's going to cause um, healing of tissue and it's going to help with eliminating pain and regenerate pain. But if you run it for like two to three minutes on the spot, it's going to cause inflammation. So that can be good if you're trying to regenerate a ligament. But then the next time they came in, once everything is stabilized, then you would do a very small dose, like less than 30 seconds on that spot so you can stimulate healing. But you can't do prolotherapy with uh, a five milliwatt laser because you, you can't run it long enough to cause inflammation. And the super pulse ones, you can't, can't use them for that either because they don't, they don't have enough power. There's not enough hours in the day to do it. So. And Dr. Randy, let me make a comment here. I mean, this this is really one of the best presentations I've ever heard, and that's bad because I I've taught these all over the world, and you really nailed some things down for me today. So, if doctors, practitioners, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed here, that's good. It means you're getting a lot of good new implications here and indications of using laser at a deeper level. Now, the good news is uh, Dr. Randy and his partner, Dr. John, will be at homecoming. February 23, 24, and 25, and you can get treatment, and you can have them show you how they do this to these different levels of treatment like they're talking about, whether you're shooting for a treatment in the spinal cord or just a shoulder joint or muscle soreness or acupuncture. They will demonstrate all this, and in my workshops, I will be using it as well, and we'll be demonstrating this, this effect that you have here. Both Dr. Brett and myself have the 6.1 watt. We've just graduated to the 18 because He's only had this out the last few months, but we will demonstrate this for you. You'll get to see show and tell and, and experience the change yourself. So we, we've also come out with, with some LED devices too. So we're, we're going to be sharing that with you at, at the seminar also. So the, there's been a number of studies um, on LEDs. I, Again, we were talking earlier about penetration that's dictated by wavelength more so than it is by 
um, whether it's laser or not laser, coherent versus non-coherent light. So, so they've been using uh, lasers for um, post-surgery and getting phenomenal results. So again, um, lasers and LEDs of optimal wavelength penetrate up to 23 centimeters. So it's more important uh, about, about the wavelength than it is in anything else for penetration. And then power is, is uh, very important when it comes to the jewels. So some of the new toys that we have coming, that we've just come out with, again, we came out, this is a, a picture of uh, an average um, LED that's red and infrared. Most of the LEDs out there are 300 milliwatts um, because if they run them more than 300 milliwatts, um, they get too hot. Uh, we have 8,000 milliwatts. Uh, we have 5.5 um, 5 milliwatts of 850 nanometers, and then we have two and a half watts of of red. So you, you can you can let me go back. So you can definitely see the difference uh, and feel the difference. Of, of the output. And so the, we, we developed these for patients for home use. A lot of doctors are using these to do neuropathy because like I said, you can't do neuropathy with um, a low powered laser and get good results, but this has enough power that you can get good results. So um, a lot of people that are doing neuropathy are selling these to their um, patients for home use. And what, what I like about LEDs is that they are very safe. Uh, you can handle a lot higher dose without um, having the negative effects. This, this has a fan to keep it cool, and it has a one minute timer. Treatment times with this are one to two minutes, whereas treatment times with these are usually a half hour to an hour or more just to get results. So this is our cold laser, and so this is some of our probes. So the reason we came out with the 18.1 watt laser was for people that were doing neuropathy. So you're looking at 40 seconds to get four joules per centimeter squared to a disc. All right, so that's the sweet spot. So on a low back, you don't want to do more than 40 seconds on one spot. And a lot of people, what they're doing is they're doing 40 seconds on the disc, and then they're doing the other 20 seconds on the surrounding area. And if people are using this to do brain, they're doing 10 seconds on the frontal lobe, and then they're doing 10 seconds to 20 seconds on the occiput because of the hair, they're getting less penetration, so they do it a little longer on the occiput. But it's very, very quick treatment times compared to, to what we were seeing with the 6.1 watt. I mean, that was, that's the second fastest um, laser on the planet right now is the 6.1 watt. You know, you're looking at two minutes for getting enough joules to the disc. Um, but for doing neuropathy, you're looking at an average of like six to eight minute treatment times for the, doing the both feet and the low back versus we're seeing uh, about a minute and a half treatment times to do neuropathy with the 18.1 watt. So down here, the 100 watt super poles, this is what we were talking about before, to get four joules per centimeter square with 100 watt through pulse, you're looking at 40 plus minutes to do that. That's why most of these um, super pulse out there, they have stands, they're, they're set up for doing long treatment times. The problem is even at the treatment times that, that people are using with these, these uh, 25 and 50 um, watt lasers, they're not running them long enough. So like for example, you know, with a, a 50 watt, you would have to run it for 80 minutes plus to get enough joules to the disc. I know people aren't running them that long. And so if you have a 25, you're, you're doing another, you're doing 160 uh, minutes to get, you know, to get enough joules to centimeters squared. And a lot of those uh, super pulse lasers, they have like um, bowl testing, um, electrical impedance of the skin to know when they've got enough joules per centimeter squared to the skin to get a physiological effect. So you run it for a few minutes on a spot, 
and then it tells you that you've got enough joules per centimeter squared on the skin. But that's not, you don't have enough joules per centimeter squared deep to get the results that you're trying to get. That's the problem with these things is, is they just take too, too much time. Veterinarians like the Super Pulse because it's low powered, they're working on very small animals, and the hair doesn't, doesn't seem to heat up as much as it does with the more powerful 808. So they, they like, like these kind of lasers, but they were, you know, that's for a very small animal. That's not for a human being, and they're not usually doing um, spinal cord things. So here, this picture is 18.1 watt. When I say 100% usable power, it's because you can push it into the body and not lose any of that energy, where any hot laser, no matter what the power is, you can't do that. You're losing, it's not usable power. So the, here's the spot size. It's 20, the it's 23.32 centimeters squared. So the power density underneath it is is basically three quarters of a watt per centimeter squared. So that's how we keep it so it's not getting hot. So the nominal ocular hazard distance is what I, I brought up earlier is like if you have a hot laser and that's collimated, meaning that if you shine it across the room, it comes to a point no matter what size that point is, that is a dangerous laser. If you shine it and it hits a piece of glass or it hits a, a doorknob and it bounces off and hits somebody in the eye, you can blind them. This, because it's coming out at a 30 degree angle, once you get five feet away from it, it's safe. So, you know, you have to, that's a, you have to be really careful with your hot lasers, not to mess around with, you know, without eye protection. And plus, you don't want to do anything around the head with them because you can do damage to eye. So we're coming out, another toy we're coming out with, we're coming out with a portable controller. So you can use all of our lasers up to the 6.1 on it. It's battery powered and that makes them so you can move from room to room with it. Or, you know, if you're treating animals with it, you can go out in the field with it, travel with it. Um, but that you can't you can't run the 18.1 on it. It it would just smoke those batteries. So so lasers they stimulate regenerate every tissue in the body. So you can use them for just about anything. There's all kinds of studies out there for for everything from heart, brain, kidney, liver. Um, something I just found, a study I just came across this last year is you want to ice before light therapy, improves penetration. So this gets down to um, the, the blood, you know, hot lasers pulling blood, to, pulling blood to the area, red blood cells to the area, decrease penetration. So when you ice, it will, um, with vasoconstriction, get some of that blood out of the area and you get better penetration. So, we'll have to worry that with the 18.1 watt, but if you've read 5 milliwatt, then you might want to need that. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, there's another study that the reason I pulled this one up um, is because they were talking about stem cells. There's a bunch of studies out there um, on stem cells. The problem with stem cells is sometimes there's good uptake and sometimes there's not very good uptake of those stem cells. What they've found is if you laser the stem cells before you inject them into the body, you get significantly better uptake. Or if you inject them into the body and then you laser, you get significantly better uptake. So I know a lot of your docs are, are doing stem cells now. Um, they can get a lot better results if they laser them in. So can light heal the brain? Yes, there's been over 150 studies. Harvard's been doing a lot of studies on brain. Um, personally, I've treated somebody that had a stroke the week previous. They were totally scrambled and when you talk to them. And um, it was almost like watching the brain re rewire itself. It was that phenomenal. After two sessions, 
um, they were basically back to normal. So please use it on people who have had traumatic brain injuries or strokes or even heart attacks. Here, here's a, this is something I've been doing for probably the last five years. I've been treating my eyes with um, with the lasers. I use, I've even used the 18.1 watt. Um, I hold it the 18.1 watt about six inches away, and I move it in a circular motion for about five seconds. Um, what blew me away about this study is how high, um, you know, the, the percentage-wise of the results that they got. I mean, 95 to 97% improvement, uh, I mean, of, of the people improved. I mean, this was a study that they did two sessions, two weeks in a row, and they found that three to 36 months after treatment, visual acuity was um, much better. It was still, uh, still much better, and the, the control group, the visual acuity and the control group remain unchanged. So, and there were no adverse effects were observed in the study. And so, I mean, this is a significant amount of people. Uh, I have a lot of people that are using it for macular degeneration and getting phenomenal results. So, uh, laser therapy with cancer, um, there's this is a study done just last year. They're, they're showing that may improve survival of head and neck uh, cancer patients treated with chemotherapy and, and radiation therapy. So um, that's good news. So to the specials that we're having um, for homecoming, where if you buy a 6.1 watt laser or an 18 one point laser. Um, you can get a second laser probe free, um, uh, either anything from a AccuTip a laser up to a uh, 100 watt super pulse. And then we also um, are putting our LEDs on special for um, Bremhall Docs. They list for $8.95 and they'll be available at the seminar for $500. So again, remember the goal. The goal is to get four joules per centimeter squared at the tissue that you're trying to treat. If you have any questions, uh, you can see me at uh, Bremhall Homecoming, or you can give me a call at the 530-642-9680 number, or you can uh, visit my website and contact me there. So let me just uh, repeat that both uh, Dr. Randy and Dr. John Mooney will be there demonstrating in the hall. We'll be using their, their instruments when Dr. Brett and I treat. And as you know, uh, most likely Dr. Mark Harris and I are going around the country teaching injections of biological allograft and also how to increase your own individual stem cells. We have a product now called OptiMagnus Stem. It's, a, it's an amazing product that we use nutritionally and also you can improve nutritional absorption utilization by lasering that into the area. So Dr. Brett and I are going to be teaching laser along with adjuster, percussor, instrument integration. Uh, Brandy Brimhall will be teaching everything you need to know to be profitable and to stay compliant with the law of, of all the different organizations. Doug Grand is again has eight different hours between his workshops and on the stage teaching all the latest, greatest innovations in nutrition using the patented formulated nutrition that is both pre-digested and is from all organic whole food. Uh, Jesse Liebman is going to be there in conjunction with Jonathan Walker, showing how both of them do well over a million dollars a year using the laser for peripheral neuropathy, knee injuries, and they'll take you through the whole protocol. We'll have Beamer people in the hall, pulse electromagnetic uh, treatment in the hall. We'll have uh, all different kinds of people demonstrating what's going on. Dr. Harper will be there, and he. He uh, works out of Idaho, which it's legal to do injections in that state with biological allografts and to do uh, therapies, uh, regeneration, et cetera. So it's going to be an incredible time. Dr. Kessler is going to be there again this year, like it was last year. He'll speak from the pulpit on Friday, and then we'll have a, a free dinner meeting that Friday night. And uh, he and Larry Connor will show you how I use my trust 
and how you use the, the family foundations to both generate more money and to become your own banker and to minimize your liability in the world and also the taxes that you pay because you keep the money in the family. An amazing thing. Dr. Pick will be there again this year teaching cranial sacral his way. Uh, people really love that. As I mentioned, Dr. Walker will be there teaching peripheral neuropathy, knee injuries, and how he used the laser, the LED lights, the different things in that way. And then this year, we have a brand new participant, Dr. Patrick Porter, who is a PhD. And if you do not know about brain tap, you need to learn it. I'm now doing it every day, twice a day if I can, but every day, absolutely religiously. Uh, he's developed a way for very inexpensive to have your own unit at home. And Doc, you can... I think if you buy them in bulk, you can get them for about 250 and sell them for 500. And for the patient, that's worth 50,000 to them if they'll use it. It's just nothing like being able to alter the bad or in, in, improper impulses that are stored in the brain, the self talk, the posterior traumatic syndrome. He is working with the government and has found ways to help release those from the body. So, Dr. Randy, you did an amazing job. Gave me a lot of good insights, even though I've been doing this for 30 years, I learned through things today. We look forward to seeing you at homecoming, February 23 through 25. The 22nd will actually be treating. So if you want to be treated, and we'll get Dr. Randy and Dr. John there. They'll be out in the hall, and you can get treated by the laser then in the next three days as well. Good day. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you at homecoming. Bye-bye. Thank you.